welcome to our channel the complete women channel you see many of us rush into marriage many of us while getting to know someone that you want to get married to you come across some red flags you come across some behavior that you see that no i cannot live with this but because of the pressure around you or because you've been blinded by emotional love you ignore those things and then you get into marriage hoping that he's going to change my sisters i want to just tell you the truth today that if this grown up man that you were dating did not change he is not going to change in the marriage except God intervenes. You see, we have come to the knowledge that women are created to always be under someone. And so before we marry, we are under our parents, we are under our father. And then a man will come and marry you out of the control of your father. And then you come under the control of your husband. But the man grows out of control. Bible says that a man shall leave his father and mother and then cleave unto his wife. So the man grows out of um, control of the parents and then come out of their control. Now he is an individual who is not under anyone's control. And if this man is not God-fearing, then he's not even under God's control. He is going by his, his mind, is going by the desires of his heart, and he is doing things according to what pleases him. And so you overlooked all the red flags, and then you married him, and now his true character is coming out. Then you say, no, 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 I cannot. I want to divorce. But what are the grounds for divorce? Is there any ground for divorce according to the Bible? I want us to go into the Bible to see the mind of God. What is even marriage about? And I have a video that tells us about marriage and who is behind marriage. Marriage is not an earthly institution it's not an institution for any individual and so only the the doctrine of god prevails in marriage and so you cannot do it your own way you cannot say that this is how my friend is doing it and so i want to copy my friend you have to go by the scriptures one because of your soul you want to have eternal life and two you want to please god and so my sisters i want us to go into the bible to see the mind of god if i married an unbeliever you know, I saw his character. I saw that he was a womanizer. When we were dating, I saw that he was a womanizer. But I loved him so much and I didn't want to lose him. And so I overlooked that thing, um, his flaws, his, his shortcoming, and I married him. And now in the marriage, he hasn't changed. He is still chasing after women. He is committing adultery that many people are saying that the Bible says that for the sake of adultery, I can leave my husband. And so I am thinking of divorce. Am I right? If I divorce this man, um, am I righteous before God? Please, let's go into the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 from 10 to 13. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. He says unto the married, this instruction is for us, the wives. I command, yet it's not me, it's not me, Apostle Paul commanding. It's the Lord, it's the Lord God Almighty. This, this commandment is from Jesus Christ. And what Jesus Christ is telling us, the wives, is that we should not depart from our husband. 
but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And the same commandment was given to the husband. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But if she departs, maybe now this unbelieving husband has become so abusive and you are scared. He, he can kill you. You are scared for your life. The Bible says that you can go. But if you go, remain unmarried because you are still married to him. You are still married to this man. You cannot leave him. So he is being abusive. You are scared for your life. Go, your step, go and live um, in a separate place, but don't marry because you have a husband and he can change. God can touch him. So you separate from him while you are praying for him. That is the instruction from God. Then Apostle Paul says, but to the rest speak I, not the Lord. This one is just me speaking. And what I am speaking, I'm just giving you advice. I am just building on what God has said. What has God said? God has said that don't leave your husband. But if the situation becomes unbearable and you have, you have left, then remain unmarried. Don't marry again because you still have a husband. And if you marry, it's going to be adultery. You will be committing adultery because you have a husband. And so Apostle Paul is not giving any other um, instruction which is contrary to what God has said. He is just building on it because one, he knows that one, I have made it clear that God says that don't leave your husband. That God says that if you leave, do not marry again whilst the man is still alive. Otherwise, you become an adulterer. So he has made that point very, very clear. And so now what he is saying is just building. He has laid a foundation. So now he is just building on the foundation to tell you, to give you an advice. What is his advice that he is giving to us? He says, but to the rest, speak I, not the Lord. If any brother has a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Now, this is for the women, and we are talking to the women. This is for us, the wives. And the woman which has a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Okay, and the woman which has a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So, like we said, you saw the red flags that this man was a womanizer, maybe a smoker, maybe he has some some um, very hot-tempered person. One day he showed it to you when you were still not married, but you were blinded by love. You didn't even see it. And then you married him. Now God has made it clear that you, wife, never leave your husband. No. Till death do you part. You can never leave this man, but you can separate. The Bible allows separation. Where the situation is so unbearable, you can separate. But like we have said already, when you separate, don't marry again. Otherwise, you become an adulterer, which is the sin that leads to hellfire. So Apostle Paul is saying that the man that you married, that showed his character to you once, once or twice, and you overlooked it, People were calling you and saying that uh, this man that you want to marry has a girlfriend in this place and you, you said they were just jealous. You overlooked these things. You saw it on, the, on, on Facebook, some of the things you were do, he was doing. You saw these things and then you overlooked it and you have married him. My sister, you have married an unbeliever. 
Maybe you go to the same church, yet he's not born again. He was a sinner and you overlooked it and you married him. When the Bible has said, do not be on equally joked with an unbeliever. You said, I love him so much. I will change him. I will change him. And now you have come to the situation where you can't change him. Oh, may the Lord help you, my sister. I know how marriage is. Very difficult. And that is the reason I want to warn everyone, especially the single. May the Lord help us. And so now the reality is that you can't change him. And he is still doing these things. He is a womanizer. He is sleeping around. He is a drunkard. He goes out. He forgets about the, the children. He doesn't even come home. Two days, three days, and then he will come home. He is hot-tempered. He is not a gentle person. He is not the kind of person that you dreamt to, to marry. But there you go, you have him as your husband. And you must obey him, you must submit to him as God has, has commanded us to do. Now, what do you do? Are you going to seek for divorce? God says, no, no, you can't. There is no provision for divorce. And I'm going to show you very, very quickly, I will show you very soon, that the Bible does not allow anyone to marry, um, to divorce and marry. And I'm going to show it to you. But I want us to establish this point that your unbelieving husband can be an adulterer. Like I said, that he's sleeping around. He is, he is chasing after women, even though you are there. Even sometimes you are walking with him, you see him lusting after people. It's so shameful, but he's an unbeliever. And Apostle Paul is advising us that if your unbelieving husband is happy, is pleased to live with you, do not leave him. Okay? Your unbelieving husband can be an adulterer, a drunkard, a smoker, um, what other sin? Every sin, occultic, um, satanist. He can be, he can do any sin at all. Unbelievers, sinners can do any sin. He can be a liar, whatever. Whatever. He can be anything. Unimaginable things, unthinkable things. You see, all of us can be horrible. All of us can be horrible human beings, but it's just because of Jesus. He, his spirit dwells in us. And he has given us the power to overcome sin. And so he helps us to overcome sin. But this unbelieving husband has not yet surrendered his life to Jesus. And so he doesn't have the power to overcome sin. He can be anything. So Apostle Paul says, if he is happy to live with you, don't send him away. But then one day he says, now leave my house. I don't want to see you leave, then you can leave. He is asking you to leave. I think that is 13. Let's see. And the woman which has a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Okay. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But... If the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, is the 15. But now he says, leave my house. Or he leaves and leave you alone. Apostle Paul says that let him go. It's for your peace. <laughs> now you have the freedom to serve your God. It is for your peace. If he depart, let him go. You are not under any bondage. What bondage is that? You have not sinned. You have not broken the commandment of God that says that don't leave your husband. You didn't leave him. He left you. But remember God's commandment first. The first commandment that Apostle Paul gave us that 
the wife should not depart from her husband and that if she does she should remain unmarried that commandment still holds if your husband has pushed you away or he has left you let him go let him go but don't marry again God's commandment is higher than what Apostle Paul is saying and Apostle Paul never contradicted what God was saying. He was just building up, knowing, thinking it in his mind that you have understood what he told you first, that if you depart, remain unmarried. Nothing can break a marriage relationship except death. Now, many people say that Jesus said, that accepts um, adultery, that if if your husband commits adultery, or they, they, they normally say sexual immorality. If it is sexual immorality, then you can leave your husband. Let's go into the Bible. Matthew chapter 5, verse 31 to 32. It has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, caused her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed adultery. Jesus says, except it is for the cause of fornication. So some Bible translation says sexual immorality. We have different kinds of sexual immorality so now we are asking what type of sexual immorality we have fornication we have adultery we have bestiality we have homosexuality these are all sexual immorality that the bible condemns so they are all sexual immorality so jesus is saying fornication but some bible translation are saying sexual immorality so the question that we have to ask is what type of sexual immorality can lead to divorce or putting away breaking the relationship what sort of sexual immorality so you take the king james bible and he's telling you that is fornication fornication is that type of sexual immorality that merits putting away breaking the relationship Breaking, let's go your separate way. Let me go my separate way. What is fornication? Fornication is sexual immorality that happens between unmarried people. So what Jesus was saying was in the case of betrothal arrangement. Okay, so Jesus was talking about betrothal arrangement where it's, it's like um, engagement where... Um, Everybody knows that this one, this man is going to marry this woman because they have declared it. We are going to marry and people, the community um, respect this kind of arrangement. They really respect it. And so like they saw the man that is going to marry you somewhere and they come to you, they say, oh, I saw your husband, even though you are not um, married yet everybody knows and they have accepted that you are going to marry this person so oh i saw your wife i saw your husband you know when he's coming they say oh that's your husband coming that is the befrosal relationship which is going to lead to marriage an example that we've been given is in the Bible between Mary and Joseph. And so when Joseph saw that Mary was pregnant, he saw that uh, she, has, she has betrayed me. She has gone to sleep with another person. And if Mary did that, that wasn't adultery. That was fornication because they had not yet married. So that one is fornication. And Jesus says, if it happens like that, you can break that marriage. You can break the marriage. So it is only in that case. We call it now engagement. Is it engagement people call it? I don't know. I don't know if it's called um, courtship or engagement. The time that you, you are getting to know someone and then you find out you are not married yet. You haven't done the marital rights 
that your parents have released you to him to go and live with him as your husband but you are just in the process you see getting to know him and then you found out that he has committed fornication he has gone to sleep with someone else then you can break that relationship and you are free to marry someone else because you have never married you we were not married to him but that time when you saw that he was flirting with other women when you saw that he had even committed this fornication you overlooked it and you went ahead to marry him now you are married it's a point of no return now all that you can do is to ask for the grace of god all that you can do now is to pray for god to help you if you separate from this man the bible says remain unmarried marriage is going to send so many people to hell and may god help us so now maybe my sister you are asking i didn't know this i didn't i i didn't know that um god was talking about fornication not adultery and i have left my husband because you committed adultery what should i do you have to go back to your husband otherwise stay unmarried if you have married again you have to leave the one that you you are married to right now because god sees it as adultery even if you went to court and court gave you a certificate a divorce certificate god has not given you a divorce certificate god has not sanctioned that kind of divorce and so in the sight of god you are still married to that man and i pray you everyone go and ask god if i'm telling you the truth please everything that you hear on this channel go and seek god ask him the truth daughters of christ he is your father like i always encourage people go to god and pray about it tell him god i didn't know this now i have separated i have divorced my husband i have court certificate what should i do before god that certificate is just a useless paper and it will not save you on the judgment day may the lord bless you all may the lord give you grace in the name of jesus in the name of jesus god bless you my sisters i love you all in jesus name amen